back at the science cave and we're going to look at the uh, formation of the solar system. So if I can get my pen working here. Formation of the... So the formation... of the solar system. You know, when we talk the solar system, we're talking, uh, as you would expect, the planets uh, and also the asteroid belt. And so uh, we're going to look at how this would start. Well, after the Big Bang Theory, there was a whole bunch of... Uh, interstellar gases and dust so we had these gases and dust and what ends up happening these things start slowly spinning all these little gas particles and dust start slowly spinning and the reason being when they start slowly spinning is because this whole idea of the gravity is starting to pull these in together. Now this doesn't happen any stretch. You know, within a couple of years, you're talking millions, if, if not billions of years. Well, as these things start slowly spinning together, gravity starts doing its magic and makes this cloud of interstellar dust and particles shrink. As it shrinks, it starts spinning faster and faster, and it flattens into a disk with a central bulge. So what you end up having, as it starts spinning faster and faster, see if I can draw this, you get this disc and it starts forming a, a bulge in the center. Well, as it starts shrinking, you know, it's contracting and the more it contracts, the tighter and tighter all this dust gets in here. So these particles start getting tighter and tighter and what ends up happening from there is this disc Oops. This disk of gas and dust spins around, spins around the sun. And the sun starts to form. What ends up happening? As you get the sun here, that'd be the central core, and around the sun, what you start having, as it's spinning around, you start getting these little eddies of material. And all these dust grains start coalescing together. Now, the sun it has, has a, you gotta have a solar mass or one mass of the sun, and once you get that, nuclear fusion will start to take place. And we'll talk about nuclear uh, fusion later on. But what you have is, as everything starts spinning around in this direction, the sun starts well, it essentially ignites, and you start having these other particles, and they start clumping together due to gravity. And then what you have from there is you have the sun in the center and all these dust grains will start forming. Let's see if we can get our color here. All these dust grains will start forming these little planetesimals is what they are. 
So you got this one spinning here. You know, this one's going here. This would happen to be the Earth. And these are called planet tesmos. Planet tesmos. Well, lo and behold, after time, what ends up happening is you have the sun. You've got our sun here. So this would be the sun. And then you have the planets forming and they start to orbit the sun. Now, the ones close to the sun and again Remember about gravity, the closer you are, the more gravitational field there is, the more gravitational force. The ones close to the sun are the terrestrial planets. And you're going to do a little report later. Terrestrial. Terrestrial planets. And these are like the rocky planets. These are the rocky planets. The ones farther away past Mars. So you get farther away. You don't have quite the impact of the gravitational force of the sun. And they stay somewhat gaseous. And these are these are the gas giants. We talk about the gas giants, you're talking about Saturn, Jupiter, uh, Uranus, Neptune, you know the inner one, the terrestrial ones, you're talking about uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So the farther away is the gas giants, and the ones closer to the sun are the uh, the terrestrial or the rocky planets. One thing we also want to look at is how a planet stays in orbit. Whoops, let me get to close that one out. All right, so let's look at now. This is true for all the planets. Let's look at the sun here. So we've got the sun. And again, that's the largest mass of uh, material in our solar system. And let's just, for the sake of discussion, we'll pick a planet out here. Let's just say we got something orbiting out here. And this is our planet here. Let's say eh, we can call this Earth. Doesn't really matter. And we know Earth rotates on its axis or revolves around the sun once every uh, one year 365 days so what ends up happening with the earth the earth spins around the sun and again it's not quite circular it's elliptical well let's look, let's look at the forces on there we know according to Newton's laws of motion an object will want to travel in a straight line at a constant velocity and you know without any other forces on it. So as the Earth's spinning around the Sun, Newton's saying it wants to go in this direction. Well what ends up happening we have another force here pulling it towards the center and that's called centripetal force centripetal now centripetal force is that force that pulls something to the center uh, if you ever ridden your bicycle and you're riding around you know, in a circle you can feel yourself getting pulled in towards the center well that's centripetal force centrifugal on the other hand and we're not going to get into this too much is the one that's pulling out centrifugal let's see if I can spell this right centrifugal Centrifugal. Centrifugal. Well, if you've got a force, and again, the velocity wants to take it this way, wants to go in a straight line at a constant speed, and you got centripetal pulling it in towards, you know, the gravitational pull, what you have is a resultant force. And 
And this resultant force, if I can get a different color here, is really the orbit of, is the path of the orbit. And so you have this resultant force going in this direction. So if we take our Earth again in another spot in time here, which we can do, and what you have, this is just keeps continually going on and on. And let's see if we can get our, we've got our velocity wants to take it in this direction. Centripetal force is pulling, oops, is pulling it in that direction. The resultant force, again, is going to give it into this direction. So this is what is constantly happening with an orbit of any planet around the sun. This also holds true for comets, anything that's orbiting the sun. You've got centripetal forces pulling it to the center. Velocity wants to keep it going according to Newton's laws of motion. It wants to go in a straight line at a constant speed. And you have this resultant force bring it into its orbit. So that's what we're going to uh, end this one. And uh, we'll catch you later.